Hi, my name is John Lazarsfeld, and today I'm going to be talking about our paper, Approximate Majority with Catalytic Inputs, which is joint work with Talia Mir and James Osmanis. So our work is about the majority problem in a variant of the original population protocol model. So we'll briefly review the original model, where we have a population of n mobile agents, where at every step, a pair of agents is chosen uniformly at random to interact. And the local state of both agents are updated according to some global transition function. So in the majority problem, we assume that initially every agent is in one of two states, either a blue state or a red state. And we also assume that the input margin, which is just the absolute difference in the initial counts of the two states, is non-zero. And the goal then is to converge to a configuration where every agent uh, ends up in the blue state, which in this example is the initial majority state. So here are the set of transitions for a simple protocol for this task. Uh, and the protocol is referred to often as the third state dynamics. And it was independently discovered by Anglin, Eisenstadt, and Ospinas in 2008, and by Peron, Vasudevan, and Voinovic in 2009. And here, uh, whenever a blue and red agent interact, they both cancel each other out and transition into a third green state. Then whenever a green agent interacts with a blue or red agent, the green agent will transition into the state of its interacting partner. And so the intuition here is that as long as the input margin uh, is large enough, and because the interactions are chosen uniformly at random, then a green agent will always be more likely to interact uh, with a blue agent and so eventually, we'll end up converging to a configuration where every agent is in the blue state. So the complexity measures that we're interested in are, one, the number of steps or interactions uh, until we uh, converge successfully. And second, we're interested in the number of states required by protocols. So in this case, the protocol used only three states. So in this work, we consider the following variant of the original population model. So we have a population of n catalytic input agents, which are agents that never change state throughout the course of a computation, as well as m worker agents that are able to change state. And we let capital N denote the total number of agents in the population. And several recent works by Alistair et al. in 2017 and 2020 as well as by Dudek and Kososki in 2018, have considered populations that featured a similar distinction between the two types of agents. And in particular, uh, Alistair et al. noted that agents that never change states embody chemical catalysts because they may induce a state transition in another agent while themselves never changing state. And in addition, uh, population protocols have been used recently uh, to model both chemical reaction networks, uh, as well as other types of chemical processes. Uh, so with this motivation in mind, uh, we call this model in our work the catalytic input model, or the CI model for short. Now, uh, just to visualize this a bit more, uh, whenever two catalytic input agents interact, neither will ever change state. But on the other hand, when a catalytic input and a worker agent interact, the worker agent might change state, but the catalytic input never will. And so the majority problem in this model extends naturally, where now we're interested in determining which of the two catalytic input states uh, is more prevalent in the population. And now we let the input margin denote just the absolute difference in the count of the two input states. And our goal is to eventually converge to a configuration where every worker reaches some state corresponding to the correct input majority. So this might mean that uh, every worker agent enters some a blue worker state corresponding to a blue catalytic input majority. So we're interested in the majority problem in the catalytic input model. And so we can first recall what we know about the majority problem in the original model. So in the case of general or exact majority, where the input margin could be as small as one, uh, in the recent years, uh, there have been several protocols which can do this quickly or in n polylog n steps uh, with high probability. 
uh, most recently by Ben Nunn et al. in, in 2020. Uh, but at the same time, uh, earlier result by Alistair et al. in 2017 showed that any protocol for exact majority in the original model uh, requires at least log n states per agent uh, in order to be correct with high probability. Uh, so a rather large state requirement uh, per agent. Now, on the other hand, uh, in a relaxed version of the problem called approximate majority, uh, a correct answer is only expected when the input margin is sufficiently large. And in this case, uh, this can be done using only three states in n log n steps with high probability, uh, in particular, using the third state dynamics protocol that we saw in the example on the first slide. And uh, recently, Condon et al. In, in 2019 improved the analysis of this protocol and showed that the protocol converges correctly uh, as long as the input margin is square root n log n. So what do we know about the majority problem and the catalytic input model? Well, a recent result by Alistair et al. in 2020 gave a protocol for approximate majority in the CI model that converged correctly in n log n steps uh, with high probability, but requires log n states per worker agent. Uh, in, a, in addition, uh, the protocol converged correctly only when the input margin uh, was linear in the number of catalytic input agents. So it's remained open though, uh, first, whether there is a protocol for exact majority in this model that converges quickly, and also whether there is a constant state protocol for approximate majority in the CI model, uh, and if so, under what requirements on the input margin. So the main contribution of this work is to help partially resolve these two questions. Now, on the one hand, we show that in the case of exact majority, every protocol in the CI model requires at least n squared steps to be correct with high probability when the number of input and worker agents are both a constant fraction of the total population. And this implies a strong separation between the CI and original population models. Now, on the other hand, we show that the third state dynamics of the original model uh, can be adapted to give a constant state protocol for approximate majority in the CI model that converges in n log n steps with high probability uh, as long as the input margin is square root n log n. So for the remainder of the talk, uh, we'll give a high level overview uh, and intuition for these two results and then we'll end by mentioning a second set of results that uh, introduces a second variant uh, to the original model. So we'll start with the lower bound on protocols for exact majority in the CI model. And the key observation here is that we can never tell whether or not an input agent has previously interacted with a worker agent. Uh, so whenever we have a interaction between a worker agent and a catalytic input agent, we can view this more as the worker agent taking a random sample with replacement from the input population. Now, for the sake of proving lower bounds in the CI model, uh, we consider the following super CI model. So the super CI model features uh, a catalytic input population of N agents, as well as a computationally unbounded super worker W. And here, uh, every time W interacts with the input population, uh, it sees a blue input with probability P and a red input with probability one minus P. And so again, we think of this as the super agent taking a random sample with replacement uh, from the catalytic inputs. And so now in the context of majority, uh, the goal of the super worker is to take S samples and then use these samples uh, to determine what it thinks the correct uh, input majority is. Now, because uh, the super worker is computationally unbounded, uh, it's capable of simulating any regular CI model protocol. Uh, and so this means that uh, if we have a lower bound on the number of samples that the super worker needs in order to produce a correct output with high probability, uh, this implies a lower bound on the total number of interactions that any protocol in the regular CI model needs to be correct with high probability. 
So now uh, for the exact majority problem, again, the hard case is when uh, the input margin between the two catalytic input states is one. And so this means that the probability that the super worker sees a blue input is very close to the probability that it sees a red input. Uh, and moreover, we can show that uh, the optimal strategy in terms of minimizing its error of the super worker is just to take S samples and then to output uh, the majority value of these samples. And so then it follows uh, that in this hard instance, in order to overcome the sampling error, the super worker needs at least uh, N squared samples in order for half of them to be from the correct uh, majority state. And now when uh, the number of uh, catalytic inputs is a constant fraction of the total population in the regular CI model, uh, this then implies the uh, N squared lower bound on the total number of steps needed by any CI model protocol. So uh, we note that this also, uh, the same bound can be applied to, the pair, to determining the parity of the catalytic input states, uh, given that there's a one-to-one -one correspondence uh, between the parity problem uh, and the exact majority problem with input margin one. And again, because we know that uh, exact majority uh, can be done in the original model uh, in n poly log n steps, uh, that this implies a strong separation uh, in the computational power of the two models. So while exact majority in the CI model is hard, uh, it turns out that we can successfully adapt the original model third state dynamics to give a constant state protocol for approximate majority uh, in the CI model. Uh, so specifically, the protocol we present uses only uh, five total states. So the two catalytic input states and the three, only three worker states. Uh, and the transitions of the protocol um, are again, adapted from uh, the original third state dynamics, uh, which we saw in the example on the first slide. Uh, and in particular, uh, the set of interactions between two worker agents uh, are identical to the transitions of the original third state dynamics. Uh, and we also add the following two transitions uh, between uh, uh, catalytic input and a blank or green worker, where if a green worker interacts with a blue input, the worker will transition to the blue worker state. And if the green worker interacts with a red input, it transitions to the red worker state. Uh, so again, the intuition is that uh, if we assume that all the worker agents start in the green state, then as long as the uh, input margin between the blue and red uh, input states uh, is large enough, then uh, worker agents in the green state will be more likely to transition into the blue worker state. And although that we will uh, still have a small number of uh, red inputs in the population that remain there over the course of the computation, uh, once the number of blue worker agents becomes large enough, uh, then this again means that uh, other worker agents will be more likely to transition into the blue worker state. And eventually this will allow us to converge to the all blue worker configuration corresponding to a blue input majority. Uh, now specifically, uh, we show that as long as the input margin uh, is root n log n, and when the number of workers and inputs are both constant fractions of the total population, uh, then we'll reach this uh, converged configuration within n log n steps with high probability. Now, uh, to prove the correctness and the efficiency or the total number of steps uh, needed until convergence, uh, we reduce the problem to looking at a sequence of uh, biased one-dimensional random walks. Uh, so in particular, uh, we think about the bias as looking at the fraction of agents uh, in each of the five states at any given point of time in the computation. Uh, and although these counts and fractions are changing, uh, we use a, a structure of phases uh, that allows us to uh, bound these counts throughout various points of time in the computation. So specifically, we look at the following three progress measures. So I'll first point out that these lowercase uh, letters are random variables denoting the number of agents in the corresponding state at any given point in the computation. And so the first progress measure P 
uh, represents the total difference between the number of agents supporting the blue input state and the number of agents supporting uh, the red input state. And then the progress measures X hat and Y hat uh, capture the uh, number of workers in the X in the in the blue worker state and in the Y work in the red worker state respectively. Uh, and uh, we notice the invariant where uh, X hat plus Y hat uh, will always be equal to uh, the total number of workers, which is M uh, throughout the, the computation. So uh, with these progress measures in mind, uh, we use the following set of three phases, uh, which was first introduced by Kahn and et al. Uh, in 2019 when looking at or when analyzing um, the original model third state dynamics. So in the first phase, uh, we consider a logarithmic number of stages uh, where at each stage, the progress measure P doubles. And this continues until P reaches a constant fraction of the worker population uh, plus the initial input margin. And then in the second phase, uh, we, we consider a logarithmic number of stages where the progress measure Y hat decreases by a factor of two. Uh, and this continues until uh, Y hat drops below some value that's logarithmic in the total number of workers. And finally, in the third phase, uh, we look at uh, the progress measure Y hat until it drops to zero. And at this point, when Y hat is equal to zero, uh, this corresponds to every worker being in the uh, blue or X worker state. So the strategy of every phase is to treat the progress measure we're considering um, uh, as a biased one-dimensional random walk. And so uh, first we bound the number of productive steps that are needed to complete the phase correctly, where the productive steps uh, are just this set of uh, five non-null transitions. And from there, we then bound the total number of steps for each phase uh, that are needed to obtain the requisite number of productive steps with high probability. And taking a union bound uh, over every phase and stage then gives the final result. So just to visualize this a bit more, uh, here is uh, an example execution of the protocol on a population with uh, 5,000 uh, inputs and worker agents, uh, where the uh, blue, red, and green lines uh, represent the number of agents in the corresponding states at uh, the various steps of the computation. So the first pink vertical line uh, represents the end of the first phase, uh, which we can think of as uh, having a sufficiently large gap between the number of uh, blue and red uh, worker agents. And finally, the second vertical line uh, represents the end of the second phase where uh, the progress measure Y hat drops below some value that's logarithmic in the total number of workers. So uh, in a sense, the sum of the uh, green and red lines. And finally, in the third phase, uh, we the protocol continues uh, until the progress measure Y hat drops to zero. Uh, in other words, meaning that every worker enters the blue worker state. So we now turn to discuss a second set of results, which considers uh, an additional variant to the original population model. Uh, and this is called transient league events. And these uh, are events that were considered as well in uh, the work of Alistair et al in 2017 and 2020. And if we recall the connections uh, between population protocols and modeling uh, chemical processes that was mentioned earlier in the talk, uh, we can think of a leak event as simulating uh, the low probability event that a molecule undergoes a reaction that would have typically taken place in the presence of a catalyst. Uh, so in population protocols, uh, this can be modeled as a spontaneous uh, state transition that occurs at a single agent uh, at every step with some probability beta. Uh, and in the catalytic input model, uh, only worker agents are susceptible to this type of leak event, uh, given that catalytic input agents never change state. Now, similar to the work of Alistair et al., uh, in our work, we consider these leak events uh, to occur adversarially, meaning that they induce the worst case state transition uh, with respect to the progress of the protocol that we're interested in. So to visualize this a bit more, if we take our uh, CI model protocol for approximate majority from the previous slide, 
So at any given step, uh, we might have a regular interaction between two agents. But with probability beta, at every step, we have one of these transient leak events, uh, which in the case of our protocol uh, would mean that uh, a blue worker agent suddenly flips to the red worker agent state. So the protocol of Alistair et al for uh, approximate majority in the CI model uh, was shown to nearly converge within n log n steps with high probability when the leak rate beta was sufficiently small. And here, near convergence uh, just means that uh, the protocol reaches a configuration where all but a fraction of the worker agents uh, are in the worker state corresponding to the correct uh, input majority. So our second set of results uh, is to show a similar type of robustness to these leak events uh, of the third state dynamics uh, family of protocols. So uh, first we show that our CI model protocol for approximate majority uh, also nearly converges in n log n steps with high probability uh, when the leak rate beta is sufficiently small. But we also show that the uh, original third state dynamics protocol in the original population model where all agents are susceptible to these leak events, uh, that this protocol also nearly converges in n log n steps with high probability uh, for small enough beta. So now I'll just uh, briefly mention uh, some more specifics about the uh, convergence of uh, our protocol for uh, in the CI model and the results uh, for the original model, third state dynamics, uh, is, uh, follows analogously. So in the CI model, we show that uh, when the input margin is at least root n log n, then the protocol within n log n steps uh, will reach a configuration where at most a beta fraction of the worker agents are uh, in the incorrect worker state. So that would mean that uh, a beta fraction of uh, worker agents are in the red worker state, uh, even though we have a blue input majority. And the analysis uh, for this near convergence uh, uses, uh, it follows similarly from uh, the analysis in the non-leak setting, uh, where we use a structure of, of phases and we consider uh, biased one-dimensional random walks. Uh, and so the strategy here is to first bound the number of these leak events uh, that could occur uh, at any phase of the computation. And then from there, we bound the number of non-leak steps uh, that are needed to still make progress throughout the protocol. So to visualize this a bit more, uh, here again is a, an example execution of the protocol uh, where we track the, the, the counts of worker agents uh, up to four n log n uh, steps. And in this case, uh, beta is zero, meaning uh, we're in the non-leak setting. And here, just as we saw in the previous slide, uh, we know the protocol uh, will eventually reach uh, a configuration where every worker is in the uh, correct uh, worker majority state. But now when we have a leak rate of log n over n, again, we see at the end of the four n log n total steps, that a, a large fraction of worker agents will be in the blue worker state, but that this uh, convergence uh, occurs uh, much slower. And finally, uh, if we increase the leak rate to root n log n over n, uh, we can see that the after the at this cutoff point, the fraction of agents uh, in the worker in the in the blue worker state is still large, but is dropped uh, compared to the smaller leak rate. And this uh, uh, is in line with our theoretical results. So finally, I'll mention that uh, the third state dynamics protocols, uh, both in the CI model and in the original model, uh, behave similarly in the presence of these transient leak events uh, as they do in the presence of Byzantine agents, which is a type of uh, dishonest agent, which has been considered in uh, previous work uh, that looks at uh, the original model third state dynamics. And so our final result uh, is to show an equivalence uh, in the behavior uh, of the CI model and original model uh, protocols uh, in the presence of these leak events uh, and in the presence of the Byzantine agents. So in conclusion, uh, we've shown that in the catalytic input model, which features the two distinct types of agents, 
uh, there are some problems like exact majority, uh, which can be done quickly in the original model, uh, but are hard to compute in the CI model. But at the same time, uh, some techniques like the original third state dynamics can be easily adapted uh, into the catalytic input model. So it remains an interesting open question uh, to understand what other types of protocols and techniques can be adapted successfully into the CI model. And finally, uh, we showed that the original third state dynamics is robust to the type of transient leak events that we considered in the CI model. Uh, and so another interesting question is to better understand uh, what class of protocols is similarly robust uh, to the transient leak events in the original population protocol model. So thank you for listening to this talk and we encourage you to read the full version of the paper, uh, which is on the archive. So thank you.